Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on OpenMP implementation in Fortran. Now in this tutorial, I, I thought of talking to you guys about the order class. Hmm. What an order class does is as follows. Let's say you have certain instructions, okay? Uh, and those in, in a, inside a parallel block or a parallel do block, whatever, and those instructions have to be executed one, executed in a particular order. Let's say like the array order or the order in which the, the loop the loop is indiced, okay? And in the and uh, in those kind of cases, the order block comes becomes very helpful. Yeah, as you guys might have noticed all this all this while, if you have a loop or a parallel block, what ha what happens is that the threads will be uh, random threads will be entering and they'll be executing them in a in a random order, in a random order, meaning. But the threads, however, they'll execute the state. Each thread will execute its, its own statements serially. But when in comparison to all the other threads, which statement gets executed? Is, uh, which statement gets executed? Which which number? Which which end statement of one, which thread gets executed? All those are random. Now, what an order class does is that it makes sure that the statements uh, get executed. It makes sure that the randomness is kind of avoided or curtailed to a particular bit. And uh, make and make sure that the certain statements get executed in an orderly manner. To understand this more clearly, okay, you might not be understanding what I'm talking about it right now, but you'll understand this clearly with this example. What I have here is I just have a small program over here, a uh, program over here with this uh, array a, which is initialized to zero, whose size is whose size is eight, and the index is varying from zero to n minus one. Okay, <coughs> here. Uh, I'm calling a parallel do block with all the variables to be default, none, uh, sharing type, and so that uh, the pri and so that I'm setting thread num and i to be private and the a to be shared by all the threads. In this do loop, in this do loop which ranges from zero to n minus one, the what I'm doing is pretty simple. I'm just getting the thread number and I'm printing. I'm saying that this thread, but I'm printing the I'm printing the thread number that updated a particular uh, a in the a entry. A index and I'm updating the a index with this with the i value with the index value okay simple as that since a is 0 this is going to give me uh, this is going to give me something like a 0 equals a 0 a 1 equals 1 a 5 equals 5 like that okay and in this statement I'm going to print like saying that which thread uh, which thread print uh, printed which value of a of a and what is the that corresponding value the corresponding value of a in that in that index it's going to print all of that okay now this is a program now what I'm going to do is that since uh, the main thing I added here is that the ordered keyword over here they have been indicating that uh, they have been indicating to the loop that hey watch out one you know some of these statements I might be using the ordered block so be careful for that okay now I set the schedule class as well I'm putting a schedule class to be dynamic over here for this example you can put whatever you want, but I strongly recommend you change the values and see for see for yourselves what's happening. Okay, now what I'm going to do is that let me run this code in a let me run this code serially. So if I were to compile, build, and execute this, the results are straight forward. All the threads since thread uh, since this is serial execution, thread number is zero for all of them, and statement gets executed serially. Thread zero gets updated. I mean, a zero gets updated, printed. A zero gets printed like that for everything. Now if I were to run this parallelly, what I have here, I just have a shell script written over here. Pretty straightforward, just the same thing like, like we saw in the last time. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to clear the terminal over here and then I use the bash shell script. Now you see, there is. I'm just running this in a completely normal manner. So what I have here is that when I run this, look, if you look at the results, look at the results, the updation, the updation, the, uh, the updation and the print value takes takes place together because both of them are run by the same thread. So, if for instance, if you look at it, if, if thread three gets the chance to update a one, it's going uh, it will go and print the a one before leave, before wait uh, before giving chance for some other thread. And thread two, if it got uh, if it uh, uh, you know got the chance, here it got the chance it updated a zero and it printed the value of a zero as well. Okay. Sometimes threads might get lucky and they get to do they get a second chance to second or third chance to do, can do their do the updation for some other value and print it. Print it. What happens in all these cases is that two things: one, uh, the updation and the print statement happen 
simultane happen one after the other second second uh, uh, what happens is what happens is that the way in which which entry gets updated and which entry gets updated okay the order in which the entries get updated they are completely random in this example okay they are completely random in this example so if I were to run this again again so no, no matter how many times I run the example would be com completely completely random okay well this example is a bit odd okay anyway the which statement gets executed all of this would be pretty random now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to activate the order class okay not here I'm going to activate the order class over here now what this order class does essentially is that okay you'll see an example and I, and I like clarify see when thread 0 updated a0 okay thread 0 can immediately go and print a0 because because of the order class okay this this statement is going to print uh, print in the order of the loop indice since the order of the loop indice is goes from 0 uh, since the order the uh, uh, sequential order of the loop is from 0 to n minus 1 it's going to print a1 a, sorry 0 to n minus 1 is going to print a0 since a0 is already available updated here it's going to print a0 whereas next time when thread 0 went and updated a4 a4 will not be printed whereas a4 will be with uh, will be kept on hold the print statement for a4 will be kept on hold because according to this order block the next statement that you have to print should be a1 since a1 is available next only after since thread 3 got a chance to update a1 it's going to uh, it's going to print a1 immediately and after that after that either uh, either I mean, uh, I mean uh, next print statement will happen only after a2 gets updated if there's some other value gets updated in between they are going to wait that print statement for those indices will wait in this in this example it's, it's clearly obvious in these in these two lines a5 and a3 got updated but they cannot print because of the order class since a0 and a1 are printed the they are these get chance only to print only after a2 gets printed since a3 got up gets updated over here it's going to get printed only after a2 and and uh, true to its word a2 got printed and then only a3 gets printed similarly at this point at this point uh, at this point the a a7 as in when as in when a7 gets updated if you look at it all the values got all the values of this array got updated hence the only thing that remains is actually the print state printing statements and this printing statements happen in orderly manner so if you look at it if you look at it in this example this example the values get updated in a random manner but the values get printed in an orderly manner uh, clearly indicating clearly indicated by the by the statements over here the printing statements they happen in a random the, the the updation statements happen in random random or uh, random manner and they wait for the turn for the wait for the corresponding instruction to get update and get uh, executed in the order sta ordered statement they wait till that corresponding statement gets fin finished in the order statement once that is done okay the ones that uh, i mean okay this is the statement get over here uh, i mean once that corresponding statement comes into picture only then the other other uh, other statements get a chance to get printed and stuff okay hope you guess what hope you get what i mean now uh, one more thing to note uh, one more thing to note is that the thread order i mean the threads and the uh, and the link between the thread and the indice has no connection so especially because it's a dynamic class on the other hand if i have a static class let's say static class let's say obviously the obviously the updation would the updation could be the updation is random but the printing is the updation is random but the printing is seek, uh, ordered okay and the correspondence uh, correspondence of the thread number and the thread ids so the correspondence of the thread number and the indices they're all pop they're all proper they're all correlate they're all you know correlated i mean connected properly because of the static class okay so that's one example second thing what i'm going to do is that i'm going to keep this block ordered and this block unordered now if you look if i run this script and look at the results clearly since this block is ordered it's going to execute a it's going to update a0 first of all 
and then you're going to update A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on and so forth. So if any thread gets a chance to update A0, then it's going to go below and immediately update A, A, print A0 because A0, get, A0 gets updated over here and as and when A0 gets updated, it get, and the thread has the rights to go and print, it, print below because there's no restriction over here. Okay, so by, by, order, by putting an order over here, it also makes sure that the order comes, uh, comes out nicely over here. So that's th that's the thing about it. One more thing is that if I suppose if I were to put an order statement over here, at least for this example, it's not going to make of much difference. It's not going to make much difference. Okay. Uh, but so for some other example, there might be an uh, there might be a correspondence to it. Now, one more thing. I mean, that's about order class. So what we notice is that by putting an order class around, you're able to make a random parallel execution. I know a random parallel execution appear in a sequence appear in an orderly manner, orderly manner. So when so depending on which depending on the link of uh, depending on the sequence the sequence of instructions available for each and every thread, the threads either wait or continue to proceed to finish the remaining instructions based on where based on the avail based on the execution that gets printed in the orderly manner that gets updated in the uh, order classes. Okay. Now, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. And in this tutorial, what you could do is that when you run this code, uh, run this code and look at the results clearly and analyze it so that you guys understand this. And then you can change the values of the schedule class to be static, dynamic, guided, and or runtime and all. You can just experiment with this to understand this example more clearly. Okay. And uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.